Please welcome our poet this morning, Jacqueline Rossell. Good morning. Um, it's such a pleasure to be here um, with you all this morning and especially um, I think appropriate because it's also the beginning of Native American Heritage Month. And I am a proud Asaf Deneh, or a Navajo woman, and uh, run, started off writing when I was younger. I always carry a notebook with me. And uh, about 12 years, well, in 2012, I started a blog, really out of a process of grieving. Um, I had just lost my Nelisang, my paternal grandmother, and was very much in the state of of confusion, of not knowing how exactly I was going to continue learning. Um, I grew up in a traditional family, and she was the um, kind of the the story keeper, the cultural bearer. bearer um, and being a young Navajo woman was who I wanted to grow up to be. And so I started a blog called Grown Up Navajo, and really that that title began from this journey of growing up Navajo and really this kind of question that we always get of what do you want to do when you grow up? Um, which I feel like is this process of my own philosophy of always becoming and that's actually a theme in this first poem that I'm sharing with you. It's called Soliloquy of Honjo and for those of you who've ever read a Tony Hillerman novel you know that Honjo comes up um, as part of our Blessing Way ceremony. And a little side note, I, I'll tell you that uh, Tony, the late Tony Hillerman only knew a little bit about me, Navajo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and Hojo is a, um, the translation of the word doesn't do it justice. The translation of the word says that this is a word that symbolizes balance, that it is um, actually more than that. It's a philosophy of being, rather, in that recognizing that as the La'ashla'i, our five-fingered people, that we are connected to everything and that everything has an essence. So if it's a rock, it's a tree, it's a puerta, it's a doorway, everything has an essence. And we exist as the La'ashla'i people in existence with that. And so we're always in this state of becoming. And so you see, it's not necessarily just that we're in balance, but we know that being here on Nahazan Hama, on Mother Earth, that this state of looking for balance and searching for harmony is something that we wake up um, in search of and we go to sleep dreaming of. And so this, this poem, Soliloquy of Hong Jean, is really a tribute to this state of being, but also coming from a matrilineal society and a matriarchal society, it's a tribute to all the women who I emulate and who I um, hope are proud of me in what I'm making my life today. I challenge you to find new ways to describe my essence because I am beyond beautiful. I am the strength of a mother who pushed hard to bring her daughter into this world when her heart stopped. I am more than incredible, as I am the resilience of my great-great-great-grandmother who escaped from Huelde to return to Dinebikea. My insight runs deep as my heart beats to the rhythm of prayers sung by the medicine women in my life. My light is fire in the home, it's omnipresent, wrapping itself around you until the chill dissipates. I am light. I am love, and together this force is strong, my force is strong, and I unapologetically stand in its power throughout the day and long into the night. I won't submit to anything. I live that way before, and that kind of tiny life hurts. I'm freer like this. 
I honor myself in this life by being the woman I am meant to be. I will grow. I will morph into my next form. I will become more woman. Understand I am always becoming, not because I am not enough, but because I am everything. I am the trees, the sun, the flowers, the earth under your feet. I am the vivacity of flowing water as it caresses the embankment. I am a baby's laugh, the first laugh, because this laugh reminds us we are meant for this earth. I am meant for this earth, just like this laugh. I resonate in your soul, reverberate, and shake your being awake. I share this not as an excuse or a warning, but as a promise. I am molded in the image of changing woman, and my power is something I share, flaunt, and protect. It radiates from me, slowly burning the way the darkness and exposing love. This prismatic energy will make you want to love me more. I know this because I love me more with every effort to be more free, to be more me. I constantly woo myself. My being is an endless love song, a soliloquy of Hongzhou sung like a prayer in a hogong offering thanks and humbly requesting more blessings so this light can continue to exude, continue to shine, continue to radiate. Understand, I am always becoming, not because I am not enough, but because I am everything. So I believe in time travel. <laughs> and I believe that my people were phenomenal time travelers. And for those of you who are familiar with quantum physics and the idea and theory of multiversing, that the ability to be able to exist in different planes, I believe that as, as Diné people, as indigenous people, that we inherently had this ability and that we carry stories and songs and prayers from the past into the present, but also are delivered to our futures and our dreams and to our past through really, really wondrous ways. And so my work and my, my poetry is really this idea, this philosophy of futurism, this ability to move between realms. And I believe that in doing so, by un really um, unleashing ourselves, that we are able to heal, that we are exposed to the great range of medicine that we can that we can have if we're able to open ourselves up. And that through the work that I've been doing, both as a poet, as a cultural arts producer, that so much of what we can find, of where we can find that medicine is through creativity and through the arts. And so my poetry exists in this way as, as I hope a, an offering and a, a medicine that people can use. And this next poem that I have um, is called Seeds of Resilience. And it is, I hope, a um, inspiration um, to connect with something that needs healing or maybe a reminder of all the healing that has brought you to this place. So this is Seeds of Resilience. Oh, beautiful being, be grateful you are the kind of flower which blooms in the hardest places. What a gift it is to surprise people. How you show your ability to breathe underwater as they try to drown you. Or when they push you off glass cliffs only to watch you fly. How gorgeous you are when your faith in yourself shines like the sun, burning away clouds of doubt bystanders cast out to try to shade your day. Frenetic grace, those are the words I use to describe you. As your spirit moves with force, like lightning dancing on the hills during a warm summer monsoon, you strike. As your presence illuminates this dark world, we see, we see, 
we see you. We see how love is the seed of our resilience. You show us that the trauma you've endured, survived, has not defined you. It is not the excuse for you to fall on top of when life challenges you, but it is the reason you can feel the love so intensely. You survived love droughts. You survived love that hurts, love that was unkind, never surrendering power, your power, to the struggle. You took the scars left on your body, peeled them away, sewed them together, creating a quilt made from these imperfections and lies, the most intricate designs. It became the reassurance you'd get through the next trial, confirmation you have moved mountains before. This quilt is your comfort and proof that even pain can be worn eloquently. With your love, you showed us that trauma, heartache, betrayal was the greatest gift you could receive because it challenged you to be your own healer. You use the medicine in your heart to heal your wounds. Your example is lived out, prayed into existence, shared through the precious vessel that is your life. You heal by loving fearlessly. You heal by giving with grandeur. You heal by the constant help you offer your brothers and sisters. You've healed. You healed. Your medicine is potent. It's priceless treasure. And instead of guarding it in fear as though it will run out, you pour it on thick to all who are hurting. Scarcity was not the way you were taught. You live in poetic reciprocity. This is the love language of your people. You save what we have left, not solely in hope, but with action. Action of your beating heart. Action of your helping hands and your strong backbone. Actions that not only heal the pain, but harvest seeds and gardens that will take generations to grow. To some, this is daunting. To till soil of the land whose fruit you will never eat, enjoy, or relish. Oh, but you know the work you are giving will be felt by more than you. And this is the gift you pray for. To plant seeds of love today for people who you will only meet in your prayers. Yeah.